A corporate life. Corporate life of an MBA graduate always measures and directed by leadership qualities. Corporate success is also acceptance of your leadership style. Leadership qualities. Let's find out qualities of every leader. They lead. Understandable, right? Leaders don't wait for someone's instructions to take charge because without pausing to think about it, a leader just does that. Being a good leader means being comfortable leading. So natural born leaders incline to do it wherever and whenever they can. So if you want to be the leader, then just lead because leaders lead. They make a list. They start their morning by making a list of what they need to complete that day and they take pride in crossing off those tasks. Smart leaders prioritize the task an important one should be done first so that they do not lose productivity. They know how to get a job done. They look for ways to improve their time management. They successfully debut. Natural born leaders know they don't need to do everything on their own. They are able to find the right team to contribute to their ideas. And they are excellent in inspiring their team to do their best. They know capitalizing on others' expertise can help them to achieve their goals more rapidly. They know how to distribute tasks among their team as per each team member's strength. This allows them to focus on the bigger picture and make plans. A sign of a truly great leader is the success of the team performance under them. They listen. Being a natural born leader doesn't mean bullying around colleagues or hounding others into agreement all the time. Leaders pay attention to others' opinions and then take the time to reflect on what they hear. People tend to gravitate towards leaders whom they believe and who they feel represented by. Natural born leaders organically lead by example and are worthy of that trust. They are open to evolving. Especially in today's business world, a lot can change in a fraction of a second. Leaders always stay up to date and are open to new ways of doing things. They learn from past mistakes and have the courage to make a fresh one. They never stop learning. They try several ways before finding their final path. They are never afraid to be original and always ask questions. They enjoy life. Being a leader doesn't mean the need to be all work all the time and no fun. However, they tend to remain focused with their eye on the prize. They are also able to enjoy life outside the workplace too. How to become a better leader? Transformational leadership. How would you define a strong leader? In one study, leadership qualities such as confidence, adaptability, intelligence and consciousness were cited as the most important. Research clearly shows that leaders who are positive, inspiring and who empower as well as develop followers are better leaders. They have higher performing teams and are more valued by their followers. So what can you do to embrace these valued leadership qualities and become stronger and more effective leaders? Transformational leaders are usually described as enthusiastic, genuine, passionate and energetic. These leaders are not just concerned about helping the group achieve its goals, they also care about helping each member of the group reach her or his full potential. Now consider some of the following tips and think about ways that how you can implement these strategies in your daily life to become a better leader or transform yourself into a successful leader. Understand your leadership style. What are your strengths? Which areas need some improvement? You need to introspect and assess your skills to get a general idea of how you lead. 
once you have completed, write down all the area characteristics. Speak about the major characteristics of your leading style. Ask yourself if these qualities are helping or hindering your leadership. Once you have determined which areas need some work, you can begin looking for ways to improve your leadership abilities. Work as a role model. One of the key components of transformational leadership is an idealized influence. Transformational leaders exemplify the behaviors and characteristics that they encourage in their followers. They walk the walk and talk the talk. As a result, their group members admire these leaders and work to emulate their behavior. If you want to become a better leader, work on modeling the qualities that you would like to see in your team members. Encourage creativity. Intellectual stimulation is another key leadership quality that defines transformational leadership. You need to encourage your team members to express their creativity. One way to nurture creativity is to offer challenges to the team members, making sure that the goals are within the reach of their abilities. The sole purpose of this exercise is to get people to stretch their limits, but not to be become discouraged by the barriers to success. Have positive attitude. Transformational leaders have upbeat, optimistic attitude that serves as a source of inspiration for groups. If leaders seem disheartened or apathetic, members of the group are also likely to lose their hope. That's why even when the things look bleak and your followers start feeling disheartened, try to stay positive, cool, calm and composed. This is not like viewing things through rose-colored glass. It simply means that you are maintaining a sense of optimism and hope in the face of challenges. Listen and communicate effectively. This is the most important quality of transformational leadership. It involves a focus on one-on-one -on -one communications with their team. Good leaders should express genuine care and concern for their group members, both verbally and non-verbally. Transformational leaders, by keeping the lines of communication open, ensure that team members feel able to make contributions and receive recognition for their achievements. Encourage your team members. Would you look up to someone for guidance if they did not truly care about the goal of the team? Certainly not. You need to provide inspirational motivation to encourage your followers to get interaction. Some ideas for leadership inspiration include being genuinely passionate about ideas or goals, helping team members feel included in the process, and offering recognition, praise, and rewards for people's accomplishments. Let your team members know that you wanted their ideas Leaders who encourage involvement from group members are often referred to as democratic or participative leaders, while they retain the final say over all decisions. This encourages group members to take an active role in coming up with ideas and plans. You too can help this leadership quality by thinking of different ways by which you can express your zeal. Let your team members know that you care about their progress. You must remember when one person shares something with the rest of the group, be sure to tell how much you appreciate their contributions. Research has shown that using a democratic leadership style leads to a greater commitment, more creative problem solving and improved productivity. Offer rewards and gratitude. Another good quality of good leader involves knowing that offering effective recognition and awards is the best way to help team members feel valued and happy. It may also come as no surprise that happy people tend to perform better at work. Keep trying new things. Who says leadership is a one-way relationship? As you work towards developing some of these leadership qualities, don't forget to look for your team members 
for feedback and inspiration. Pay attention to things that have worked in past and always be on the search for new ways to motivate, inspire and reward team members. This can be your success mantra in corporate life. A beginning of corporate life. Rishabh's first job was at startup company named NBR Visionary. He still remembered how he struggled from day one. He had no idea how corporate works and interesting as it was a startup, so no hierarchy, no department. Rishabh, Raj, Lippi and Shobha were the core team along with Mr. Rao. One accounts person joined who was ex-colleague of Mr. Rao. They finalized one office space near Chembur station. It was not a fancy one, but a decent small office. They started work from there and the new phase of life started. The struggle begins. He still remembers how he won the first prize at All India Marketing Paper Presentation on the topic called innovation. But here all his all innovation went in vain. Raj was looking after IT department of company. Lippi was a content developer. Shobha was taking care of project analysis, finance and budgeting part. Strategy, sales and marketing was Rishabh's responsibility. Mr. Rao was helping in acquiring new customers, mentorship and guidance. They started targeting a new segment of schools. The student of age group 5 to 17. They visited Panchgani where there were lots of boarding schools. Met with their principals, explained them the program called Personality Development Program, PDP. Everybody was interested, but within five months of spam, Rishabh was not able to convert a single order. His strategy failed. As a startup, he had enormous pressure. Although his salary was only rupees 5000 per month, that too was not worth it. Failure was coming from all corners. Frustration level was increasing. One day, one client told him to send a PPT presentation on their strategy. He emailed that. The next day, Rishabh was on follow-up calls. When the client told him, hey, the strategy was not impressive. You guys are from management college, so you only know how to use SPSS a software used in marketing strategy. Create some questionnaire and conduct some campaign and through SPSS create a pie chart diagram and make the presentation then present it to us as a business strategy. Boss, to form an strategy you need to have sales experience. If you know sales in practical then only you will be able to formulate a strategy for any company. Remember, for any company, the goal is sales, sales and sales. Yes, he was right. Although he had a comfort level with his mentor from college days, now he wanted to break the jinx. That night, he asked Krish, Hey bro, I need sales job, hardcore sales job, please help. Okay, next day he got a call from Krish. Hey Rishabh, will you work for SG Electronics? SG Electronics? What are you talking? Who doesn't want to work in SG? It's one of the best consumer durable multinational company. Why not? Yes, he replied. Hey, hang on. Listen to me carefully. It is for hardcore sales, but not for the electronics products of which they are the market leader. It is for their newly launched IT products, basically computers. The second and most important thing this is, that is not an on-roll job. You will be working on third-party payroll. Hardcore sales job that to in multinational for the newly launched product and working on contract basis. What an opportunity to learn. Rishabh thought and he decided to take this risk as he wanted to break the fear. So he resigned from NBR Visionary and went to SG Electronics. Regional manager Mr. Arvind was known to Krish. So the interview was very smooth sailing. He was through. Networking played again in getting a job. First day at SG Electronics, Chandevli, Mumbai. Rishabh was on time at 8.30 am at the office reception. It was his first day in an MNC. 
the completely different world. People were coming flashing their cards and going inside the big hall, partitioned seats, each seat having own computers, phone, everybody was busy. Inside the hall, four cabins were there. First was for boss Mr. Irwin. Second was for second boss from consumer durable department. The third cabin was for IT networking team. And fourth cabin was for photocopier machine, scanner and tea coffee machine. Mr. Irwin came and immediately called him. He went inside his cabin. Mr. Irwin introduced him to the other team members. Senior manager, Mr. Aaron, executives, Naresh and Aleem and other junior members like sales coordinators Situ and Rajesh. After the introduction, Mr. Irwin given him the first task, a bunch of loose paper and told him to do filing and come back. He went outside and started separating the papers. Some papers were from sales department, some were from accounts and some were from marketing. He made three separate files and he needed punching machine to punch paper. Mr. Arvind asked, Rishabh, do you know the technique of punching? How to use punching machine? No sir, he replied. Okay, let me explain you. First fold the paper in two equal sides and then open it. You will see one line will appear on the paper just in the middle. Match this line with the line of punching machine's middle line and then punch. With this technique, if you punch all papers same way, the holes will be aligned and the filing of papers will be proper. Next day, he got work to do scanning of some paper. The third day, he got a task to visit another company called RCS to Mr. Ramachandran and get LC, LC. What is this? In this entire MBA life, he didn't know what LC was. Rishabh went to RCS at 10.30 am and requested the receptionist for an appointment of Mr. Ramachandran. Then he found out Mr. Ramachandran was the head of sales and he had no time for him. But due to Mr. Arvind, he asked the receptionist to tell Rishabh to wait. Rishabh waited there till 5.30 pm and Mr. Ramachandran came down to go home because it was closing time. He asked the receptionist, That SG guy is there or gone? No sir, he is there. The receptionist pointed to Rishabh. Rishabh stood up and after the handshake, Mr. Ramachandran said, Okay, you are waiting for the LC, no issue. This receptionist will give you the copy of LC. And he left. Within 5 seconds, Rishabh got the LC. Rishabh came to know this was the letter of credit, a piece of paper. So for only a 5 second work, he had wasted 7 hours. Anyway, he called Mr. Arvin and told him that he got the LC. Great work! Okay, go home from there and come tomorrow, Mr. Arvin instructed. Next day, he handed over the LC and got another work. That was check collection from another company. The other day, he got a work for going inside the warehouse and take a note on the stocks available for sales as well as available freebies. When Rishabh went inside the warehouse, the warehouse attendant was not in mood to help him out. He flatly refused to cooperate and told him, This side is your division side. Go inside and count all the products, freebies and make your list. He did not even come inside. Rishabh went inside and started counting to make list. When his job was finished, it was 7.30 pm and he looked like a worker working in coal mines. His clothes were dirty and were looking like he was a daily wages worker. But he was satisfied that he had done the assigned job on time. Next day was Friday and one week was completed in SG Electronics. Mr. Arvind called him inside the cabin. The first thing he asked was, Hey, how was your week? The first week in SG Electronics. It was good, sir. Rishabh replied. You must be feeling crazy, right? Filing, scanning, check collection, xeroxing, freebies counting. After doing MBA, what are you doing, right? You must be expecting a white collar job. But this you never expected, right? Mr. Arvind said. Rishabh told him, 
No, sir. Not disappointed at all. I wanted to learn, so I am learning. You had given me these tasks for some reason, right? Yes, there is a reason. See outside, outside the cabin. There are two hundred people working there. But your future is inside the cabin. The position you are going to get in future. The responsibility is huge. The company's future is going to depend upon your decision. And that time, if you need to send some important paper, and your office boy is not around, and if you don't know how to scan or fax, then what will you do? Will you wait for office boy? Tomorrow, if you do business with other company, and you need check or LC for billing, what will you do if you don't have practical knowledge of the problem? Then your entire billing cycle will go for a toss. So if you want to grow in corporate life, you need to know everything. How to get things done on time, even if your staff is not supporting you. Mr. Arvind explained. What a piece of learning. If you get a boss like this who guides you and explains you your future, then half of your battle will be won. Rishabh was very lucky and he got ample of occasions to learn. It was his learning and dedication within 2 years that he got involved in all segment of SG Electronics, be it sales or marketing, and now he is contributing to making a strategy as well as day to day sales rishab still remembered those days when he came to know that sg electronics is going to launch laptops for the indian market from mumbai everybody from head office to regional level started thinking about promotion and sales strategy that day he got to know that the marketing guru philip kotler is coming to mumbai and one of the sponsors of this program is sg electronics philip kotler marketing guru who did not want to meet him philip kotler marketing guru who did not want to meet him but the twist from the company was that only two people were allowed to go so the company decided to have a stall inside the program hall and display all sg products one person from dealer or distributor will be there and who will be next from company was a big question next day 8 am rishab was at kurla station and searching for auto to come to his chandevli office got a call from mr arvin hello rishab where are you sir i am at kurla okay don't come to office go directly to hotel taj lands kotla's event is there tomorrow so you need to do all the needful today If you face any problem then just give me a call. Rusha feels incredibly happy to think that he is going to meet Mr. Kotler, a dream going to come true. He went to venue directly. Only one person from distributor was present there. His marketing team was supposed to be there by 10 a.m. but nobody was there. So Rusha decided to take command in his hand and from getting product from the warehouse to taj lands and creating a stall for his company he did everything this time his warehouse team helped him a lot because in last 2 years he had made a good connection with them developed a bond and that bonding paid off they came with all the products marketing team came for giving the finishing touch Rishabh was there at the venue till midnight. One very interesting thing happened there. The PA of Mr. Kotler was there to check his digital presentation. He was checking on a laptop and that laptop was throwing some error. So Rishabh was watching. He went near him and introduced him as a representative of SG Electronics and said, "If you don't mind, then you can check your PPTs on our laptops the pa said why not he gave his unlaunched laptop to pa and tested kotler's presentations it was working fine then rishab said if you don't mind please use our laptop for sir's presentation 
Oh, why not? My pleasure. Pierre replied. Next day, the entire business community was there. All heavyweight from industry was there. Media was there for covering and attending the event. Mr. Kotler had given the presentation. Next day, the Economics Times had published the picture of Kotler giving a presentation and with his picture, SG Laptop was there on the podium. So without paying a single penny, the advertising and branding had been done. That day, Rishabh learned the basic fundamental principle of corporate life. Common sense. Use your common sense and you can do wonders. But this common sense is not very common. From ST Electronics, he moved to Rep Electronics. This company was in the printer business. From laptop or desktop, now he was set to sell printers. New product, new learning. Here he joined as sales manager. In first customer visit, he did a blunder. Actually, that customer was in need of consumable and delivery boy was not available that day. So Rishabh thought that if he is going himself, why not carry consumable and hand it over to the customer? After introducing himself, he handed over consumable, but his first impression was a delivery boy for that company. And that impression was a very lasting impression. The first impression is the last impression. So be careful when you are dealing with corporates. Lot of things happened in Rep Electronics. Like other corporates, they always recruited IIM or A plus grade management graduates. They put them under resource like him for training purpose. And once training completed, these juniors have been promoted for next leadership and people like him left for sulking. Leadership was always a conflicting and confusing issue within the system. Rishabh was in same trap now. He used to train people and once they got trained in consumer handling, those corporates which are also called as accounts in sales were given to these juniors and all sales coming from those accounts were counted in their kitty, leaving Rishabh with incomplete sales target. So no positive appraisal for him. It was frustrating. He was working for sales and the system was giving the cake to IIM products. What a disparity. He was on verge of losing his job. Then the new management team came to Mumbai region. The new boss gave him two tasks. One, he transferred him in OEM business because he refused to train new graduates. And as in OEM business, workload was less, so he got one account, RSEB, to crack and do some sales. RSEB had no past association with Rep Electronics. He had no data. So this journey started with a blind call. He had just one address. Daily morning, Rishabh started to visit RSEB office. He made it like a routine. In the morning, he had to go to RSEB and sat in the reception. He did it for seven days without fail. One day, receptionist asked him, Hey, whom do you want to meet? Anyone from IT team, he replied. Do you have the name? She asked. Yes, Mr. Kali. That day, he got that name from visitor's book by chance. One person named Vivek came to meet Mr. Kali in the IT department. He entered this detail in visitor's book. Hmm, Mr. Kali, do you have an appointment? No, he replied. Then that receptionist started laughing and told him, Hey man, I know you are coming here from last week, daily, and just sat in one corner. Before going out, you glance visitor book once. I know you don't have any contact number from IT. So write down two names and numbers from IT team. And yes, Mr. Kale is the IT head. First you meet his subordinates and team, then you meet Kale sir. And also meet Mr. Vivek because he is our old supplier. He will be very helpful to crack a deal here. That day Rishabh got all important name and numbers. 
With OEM business in the next 8 months, he was working on networking, meeting all the people in RSEB, developed good rapport with Vivek and got involved in each and every process of tendering. Soon the day came when everybody quoted his product and his company won one of the biggest order for printer through Vivek as a partner. All hard work, persistence, approach and networking paid off. Sales are of blood in the mouth. Once you taste it, then you start enjoying. Now everybody started praising Rishabh and he was putting his resignation along with RSEB purchased order. His boss was stunned. Why are you doing this? Now in this organization, everybody knows you and you are resigning? No issue sir. When I will join a new organization, in that too everybody will know me. From top to bottom, all in the hierarchy. He reverted and he left. Then he joined new company RVS Electronics as account manager for the banking sector Mumbai. New boss had enormous faith on him, never questioned him and always said in Mumbai Rishabh is there so I don't need to visit. That boosted his confidence and he started cracking big deals. One day his boss came to Mumbai and called for a meeting. In that meeting, his boss told him, you know, we have two big accounts, RIC and AOB. Both are all in the account. The guy who is handling this is unable to come to Mumbai. As these accounts have headquarters in Mumbai, we are thinking, can you take this challenge? Manage this? Rishabh started thinking, what if I say yes? My target will be doubled. I will get all India exposure. If I fail, they will recruit another guy. But if I manage, then it will boost my career. He decided to take a chance. And the rest was history. When he left that job, then he was managing banking segment nationally. His target used to start at 1 crore and reach up to 10 crore. And he was achieving it month by month. What a transformation. Now he was ready for a big role. He was at the top of his career and decided to switch the job. No risk, no gain. New company offered him a very good pay package and regional head role. Again, no risk, no gain. The new company was his old one rep electronics. This time he was in between management and field team. He joined due to his old friend Ravish, who was business head in rep electronics. His life was completely changed. Team management is not an easy task. Once you go up in the corporate ladder, your personal life and space will be on the toss. He got a new team. His corporate sales core team comprised Ketan, Jitendra, Avi, Nimesh and Ari. Then there was a channel team, finance team with Sitesh and boss team with Anupriya. Ketan was very enthusiastic, energetic and fun loving. He was always ready for the challenge. One very unique thing happened during those days. There was a government body for whom rep had to participate in the tender. Rishabh handed over everything to Ketan. Ketan did his job with sincerity and honesty. But the small mistake happened. When they closed the bid, then they came to know that they forgot to participate in the second annexure of the tender where they had to quote consumable price. And that was a blunder. Because of this small mistake, it was going to cause them a disqualification from the process. That disqualification meant a loss of more than 10 crore worth of order from the company. Now he recollected the last line of his first boss. Someday you will be in position where one mistake by you can cost millions to the company. For that blunder, he offered his resignation and took all the blame on himself. He conveyed the message to CEO 
that Ketan had no role in this and offered to quit. But his CEO told him, hold on, he's coming to Delhi, let's figure out what best they can do. Rishab and Ketan pulled out all their contacts and thanks to their personal equation with Mr. Piyush, CEO of the company who quoted rep products in government tender. They able to manage things on time with government officers and got the deal. This was one aspect of corporate life where you will be in an unexpected situation which you can't even imagine. This teammate from Jaipur, Ari, was a young and energetic guy, but he not able to convert one deal in company's favor. All work had been done by company's HO site. Like specs matching to account mapping, the dealer was also very strong in that account. But despite various visits, the purchase order was not getting released in favor of Rep Electronics. Rishabh was facing the heat from the head office on the non-performance of Ari. Ari was not telling anything as to why he was failing, what extra support he needed from his boss. So one day Rishabh decided to visit Jaipur. After reaching Jaipur, he inquired about all the accounts handled by Ari. Then he came to know that the fellow with whom Ari was meeting for purchase order was asking a favor from Ari. Favor? Yes, this you need to do in the corporate life for getting a deal cracked or we can say for making connections. Favor can be any kind, offering a free tour of a city, having grand dinner or getting something done for any decision maker's family. It can be anything. Sometimes you can gift your product and get it evaluated free of cost. And if they like it, then they will suggest your product in corporate buying. Rishabh himself had done this in his last company, where he and his boss, Mr. Mohite, arranged a free tour for a senior government employee. And Rishabh had gifted a keyboard for her personal use to get a recommendation for purchase of that keyboard from all the offices of that organization across the country. So asking favor is normal in corporate life. But the big question was why Ari had not discussed that issue with him. What was he hiding? Rishabh further investigated and find out that guy was asking a favor that he wanted him to come to his place. A sexual favor. Sick fellow and my poor chap. Yes. This is also a tooth of a glamorous corporate world. Without telling anything to Ari, Rishabh arranged a meeting with a senior authority of that organization by the help of another dealer friend and got the order released. Once the order came, he requested his head office to transfer Ari to Bangalore, his base city. His HO was thinking this was punishment posting for Ari and Ari was thinking as his family and friends were in Bangalore, this was a reward for him against the order. So this was win-win for both. Win-win for both. Balancing act is not very easy task. This way he was managing his team. But each passing day, the things were getting worse due to the international market and weak rupees against the dollar rate. The sales were getting hit and the time came when the company started to cut down the size of the team. So all of a sudden, Rishabh was to catch 22 positions. He had only few options left. Either he has to cut down his team or had to quit himself because the company was only thinking about cost cutting, not about future. They only wanted to work on the present. This was a very wrong move from a reputed company. If you have invested time and money on any resources, then believe them. They can't be considered a liability. CEO asked Rishabh's decision. Rishabh told him that he was resigning and that there is no need to remove any of his team members. Why? His HR asked this question to Rishabh. 
I believe that people make the company. The company can never make people. And if I have talent, I can get a job and survive anywhere. Unpredictable corporate world. How unpredictable this corporate world is. Last year, he was at the peak of his career. This year and now, he was jobless. Next move. Should I do something on my own? Maybe become an entrepreneur? Or write my experience and become an author? Or again search for a job? What to do? Harsh reality. Now again job hunting started. There was no dearth of jobs in the market. But the offer was not matching the expectation. When you're going for an interview with no job in hand, then your market value will be halved. So whenever you want to switch the company, make sure either you are working or you have an offer in hand. Then only you can get a good package and respect from selection fraternity. This is a very rude and heartless community. They can only think about their current company's profit and loss, not your talent. They encash your problem for their benefit. Each and every month new MBA products are coming in the market and they are ready to do the work. Their acquisition cost is less than you. So each and every year you are getting experience and your cost of the company increases. But same time due to more MBAs in the market you are getting more competitors too. Demand and supply theory is valid on job market also. Five months gone. He received many offers, someone offering 30% less than his last salary, someone even 50%. He was seriously thinking to start something on his own because with his experience, he can easily get this 30% and 50% package in comparatively doing less job than any corporate so-called 9 to 6 job, so-called because we know on paper all jobs are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But a job can never end on this time. You have to be online 24 by 7. When you are high up on the corporate ladder, you don't even know today in which city you are and tomorrow where you need to go. No timing. People are saying personal and professional life is different. But in the corporate world, when your personal and professional life will overlap, you won't even realize. You have to fight for survival. Among many offered letters, one offer was from a company who started with 5 friends 11 years ago with 500 rupees and now became 400 crore company. This company was not into selling a brand new product. They were in used refurb product. Rishabh found this an interesting and new concept. So for learning purpose, he accepted the offer and shifted to Bangalore. His next six months were full of adventure. He had seen adamant bosses, high profit business set up and in a new product, if you learn 20% as a profit in a refurb market, that percentage could be 40%. The company who started on a unique concept but even after growth, if they do not create a system to follow or their working style is old fashioned, is bound to fail. Rishabh sensed this and decided to plunge himself on a new journey, a life beyond corporate. Whatever we want in life has a price connected to it. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. A man is in debt, is so far a slave.